Don't you just love it when a plan comes together? Manchester United, 4-1 winners at Old Trafford. Go in there to Seville. Ma, Seville. Go into Seville. All we need to do is get a professional performance. What do we do? We go and win 1-0. Manchester United breeze through that second half after a wonderful Marcus Rashford goal. He went from missing two far easier chances to scoring an absolute belter. A world-class finish from Rashford. And I tell you what, fair play to that team tonight. In that first half, I don't think we particularly were controlling that game whatsoever. I don't think we were. We, because we weren't. Uh, Real Betis were coming at us. We were going at them fast. It was it was to and fro. There wasn't really much football played in the middle. In that second half, after that goal, Eric Ten Hag got exactly what he wanted from that team. We controlled the rest of the game. And I suppose when it's 5-1, it's kind of easy to do. But we put ourselves in that position. And it was that man right there that put us into that position. Marcus Rashford, he was put through by Bruno Fernandes and he spooned it over the bar. He had a chance just before that as well too. You were thinking, Rashford, you, you bury these. And that out of nowhere just whips a worldie out. Foot through it, classic Rashford, head down, cur outside of the foot. Right into the side netting. Absolutely no goal goalkeeper in the world is stopping that goal. Marcus Rashford coming up with the goods when Man United needed him to there. And chances were, at, I wouldn't say chance, they yeah, kind of were at a premium. But Man United there, 5 1 winners on aggregate. We're into the Europa League quarter final. We've already won the Carabao Cup. We're into the Europa League quarter final. We've got Fulham in the FA Cup quarter final on Sunday. Win that, we're into the semi final. In Ten Hag's first season, we could have a cup final. We could have a cup. We could, uh, what do you mean, cup finals and cups? We're, we're doing very well in the cup competitions. And I'm just happy for Rashford there, man. I'll be honest, I think he, the games must be getting to him now. I'd rather it didn't go away on England duty, but the way that he's playing, of course he's going away on England international duty. But Eric Ten Hag has got a big smile on his face. So has Marcus Rashford. And after that goal there, why not? I want to take a minute or two now to speak about Facunda Pellistri, a player who so many of us have been asking, Let's, where, 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 when are we going to get a start? For, for, I think that's nearly 900 days since he joined the club to Facunda Pellistri starting his first game for Manchester United. I might be wrong in that stat, but I think it's something like that. And i tell you what, I think he can be pretty damn pleased with how he played. By the way, can we just point out, in that first half, how on earth did Pellistri get a yellow card for that? He was fouled and got a yellow card for it. Madness. Like every single game, there's no point focusing on it, but just madness from the referee. But Pellistri there tonight, I think, as I said, he can be happy with it. And I'm pretty happy with it. He's an exciting player. You can see, I think Robbie Savage pointed out in commentary, and I was thinking it as well. He loves to do that one-two with somebody. Pass to somebody because his movement over those first five yards, he's got an explosion of acceleration that can take him away from defenders. He does like to dribble. He's got confidence to get past players. A lot of what his game naturally is, is is the sort of game that Anthony has to bring in. Anthony's got the goals. He's got the return. But he needs to have that confidence to run at a player. You've probably got the pace to beat him. You've probably got the footwork to beat him as well. And I think Pellistri, I think it was a bit of a sign from Eric Ten Hag to keep him on for the full 90 minutes. And I think he deserved it. I think he'll be happy with that. I imagine Ten Hag will be praising him after the game. And he could have and probably should have got an assist. Veghorst inches away in that first half from making it 1-0 right at the end. And he created opportunities. I think he was a bright spark for pretty much the whole game. Well done to Facunda Pellistri. From the opposite end of the pitch, man, Martinez, man. Martinez. I love you, Casemiro, but I'm sorry, but Martinez is my guy this season. He was my guy earlier on before Casemiro started uh, dominating the midfield. But Martinez is just... I feel so much more comfortable... Watching United play out from the back with the ball when it goes to Martinez. I just know that he is going to be the guy that finds a teammate. So often, he did it once in the first half in particular, I remember. That pass that he does, that vertical pass right through the middle to the halfway line. And I think Bruno got the ball and we created a chance within like three passes. Martinez is so confident with the ball at his feet. So aggressive in a really smart way. So often tonight... He kind of went went up tight to his uh, tight to his man, just a little nudge in the back, 
Nothing enough that the referee's going to go, oh, that's a foul, but enough to put that player off balance. And those small margins in elite sport, they can be the difference makers. And for me, look, there's another clean sheet there for Ten Hag, another clean sheet for United, another clean sheet for Martinez, who for me was the man at the back. I just love watching him play. I wish we could have four Martinez's down at the back. I really, really do. Certainly in terms of how comfortable they are with the ball at their feet. Uh, I tell you what, how cracking is this photo? I wanted to pull this one up for no particular reason, apart from the fact that it looks like a movie poster or something like that. Fantastic photo. And Bruno, Bruno tonight, the fact that Eric Ten Hag was able to do what he wanted to do. Bring off Bruno, uh, bring off Rashford, bring off Martinez towards the end there. Make those subs, be comfortable in the game. That's what happens when you control a game of football. That's why Ten Hag starts his strongest team. He would rather do that because Betis could have and probably should have scored in that first half. Certainly with that ball that was put through when Maguire was running through Treacle. wan Saka was out of position. There was space. I think it was Whammy. I think he put the ball just wide. Could have and probably should have scored from that position. Casemiro being kept on for the full 90. Nah, we won't be seeing him for a little while now, will we? Full game domestic ban starts with Fulham on Sunday. Mm. Fuck's sake. Anyway, Casemiro was just... Eric Ten Hag knew that he could trust him tonight there. And that it would have been different had Rashford not scored at that time, right? And instead of that going in, Real Betis were 1-0 up with chasing the game with 20 minutes to go. He probably would have taken Casemiro off then because that's the, same, that's the sort of situation where he got the yellow card against Crystal Palace. But Casemiro tonight <laughs> breezed it. Both of them there. Casemiro and Martinez were at the centre of the control of our football. And that was what we saw there in that second half. Real Betis, they kind of ran out of steam towards the end there. Fair play to them. Right. Nice town. I reckon we're probably going to get Sevilla in the next round. Watch this. With the draw is tomorrow. I think Arsenal are playing Sporting Lisbon tonight. Two all. You would back Arsenal to be beating them at the Emirates. We could well draw Arsenal in the next round. Let's see what goes on there. Their course was another game there tonight where... Man, I, I, won't, I, won't, I can't slight his character. I can't slight his um, work rate. But I, I mean, he's finishing his... Uh, it is nowhere near good enough for Manchester United. And we do need a proper number nine. But I tell you what, Ten Hag has got a man who is capable of playing a 90-minute game. And then three days later, playing another 90 minutes. And he's a good team player. Even at the end there, little flick on to Elanga running on for the, for the return. I wish he had a better finish on him, man. I, just, I like the fact that he's come in and given us something that we just didn't have. And I tell you what, Manchester United, I don't think, would have had the sort of um, last couple of months that we've had post-World Cup had we not signed Veghorst. I think he's positively impacted the overall team, albeit with some seriously poor finishing. <laughs> At least we're winning games, right? At least we're winning games. We saw Sabitzer come on towards the end there. I'm really intrigued to see if is going to be fit to start against Fulham. Well, he came on there, so you would imagine he is. And I want this to be the four games where Sabitzer just announces himself and earns himself a permanent Manchester United contract. Because without Casemiro, we're going to need him to step up. Come on, Sabitzer. Do that job. You saw what he's naturally good at there tonight. I bring Bruno one lovely ball through to, to Sabitzer. He fired in a shot, then had another shot about 10 seconds later. Don't know how he hasn't scored for United yet. I really don't. But we're going to need somebody in that midfield. If McTominay is going to try and operate as the number six, we're going to need some legs there alongside him, whether that might be Fred. I don't want to see McFred going together. Their weaknesses exacerbate are exacerbated by each other. So I want to see Sabitzer playing there, maybe alongside McTominay. We'll find out. And look, Jaden Sancho came on there to, as a substitute. I can't believe he didn't square it for Alanga. Even if he was offside, I can't believe it. But he wanted that goal. He wanted that confidence-boosting goal. But Sancho's had a bit of an indifferent return to the team, I think. The buzz and, and, and the, the sort of the, just the, the sheer joy of seeing him back after that three-month break has kind of faded away a little bit. I don't know whether it's a positional thing. You can let me know what you think in the comments. But Jaden Sancho yet to light it up in the same way that, this, that that man's been lighting up. But this man in particular has been lighting up. 1-0 there, winners. 5-1 on aggregate. It's everything it needed to be, right? It might not be the most entertaining game in the world. But I tell you what, Ten Hag will be happy at that. And so am I. Europa League quarterfinals, tick. Let's get to the FA Cup semifinals on Sunday. Let me know what you think in the comments below, as you always do.